Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Ashley and I'm a nurse educator and you are tuning into our weekly application of In the Know where we make it simple. We invite you to comment the answer to the question below in the comment section and our question this week is a patient who is recovering from a head injury verbalizes to the nurse that they want to participate in their care. Which of the following statements made by the patient indicates they understand how to prevent elevations in intracranial pressure? A, I will do the Valsalva maneuver. B, I will exhale during repositioning. C, I will lie flat to sleep. Or D, I will cough to clear secretions. If you didn't ever tune into our Facebook Live on increased intracranial pressure, we redraw an awesome picture that tells you about the three components, makes it really simple, that contribute to increased intracranial pressure, which of course, as a reminder, are increase in brain tissue, increase in blood perfusion to the brain, or increase in cerebral spinal fluid um, perfusion to the brain. Any uncompensated increase in one of those three things would increase intracranial pressure. Um, in our study package, we also have a section about what the nurse would do, what the nurse wouldn't do in terms of increased intracranial pressure and the damage and danger around that. So let's talk about our options here. How do we decrease intracranial pressure, essentially? A, doing the Valsalva maneuver. Um, that is not correct because, of course, the Valsalva maneuver, when a patient bears down, increases pressure throughout not just the cranium, but our entire body, in fact. B, exhaling during repositioning. We're going to leave that one. Yes, it's our right answer. C, lying flat to sleep. That is incorrect just due to gravity. If somebody lies flat, say their head is elevated like this at semi-fowlers, if they lie their head flat to go to sleep, that actually increases blood perfusion to the brain, much like if you stand on your head, you're doing a headstand in gymnastics or something, that increases blood perfusion and therefore increases intracranial pressure. D, coughing to clear secretions, that is not correct. Coughing and suctioning both increase intracranial pressure. We actually do not suction patients routinely um, if they have increased intracranial pressure. So the only option left by process of elimination then is B, exhaling during repositioning because exhaling actually decreases the pressure and perfusion to the brain, thereby decreasing intracranial pressure. So for the answer to this question and more, and for all concepts simplified for your registration exam, check out our complete study package and our website. We now guarantee if you purchase our package and complete our program that you will pass or your money back. And I will see you next time on our application of In the Know. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.